Always competed in sport. From the competitors of the games of Hera in ancient Greece to Bahia Al Hamad competing in London, women have had a presence. They have made their own strides, shaped their own futures, bursting across the finish lines, flipping to perfection, driving against the best, and breaking down barriers. Women in sport are role models for young girls everywhere. Through sweat, hard work, and sacrifice, these heroes are today's new champions. With their participation in sport, these women bring their issues to the forefront. By confronting the hurdles ahead of them, they illuminate the future for many girls around the world. How can female athletes of today work together to change the perception of women in sport? The time is now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Executive Programs presenter, Be In Sport, Leila Samati. Hi, good morning. I'm very happy to be with you, Leila Samati from Be In Sport, Executive Presenter. We are looking to find answers for many questions. Questions about the uh, reality of women practicing sports different from a society to another. And is the quantity of sports women should small and we should raise it. How can we do that? These are very uh, uh, important questions and we are trying to define the negative aspects. Of this situation, while in parallel as well, we try also to find solutions and work hard on making this situation better right now. What is the role of media for women's situation sports? What is the role of sports association and local federations in this issue? What are the thinking that are preventing women from practicing sports freely? To discuss this matter, we are happy to have with us a very and big special uh, uh, woman. They have also a big impact on women sports and might not even have enough time to present all of these ladies as they are and they had a great career and each one of them deserve a world book to talk about them. Let us start by our great champion, Olympic champion, Campbell Brown. Thank you very much to be with us. Marilyn Bion Sander, Executive Director of the American Women Coach. And Dira Kailo from Bosnia, Bosnia basketball player, a very famous one. Uh, yesterday she had a beautiful match, a great match, and she scored a lot. And Cass Snyder, founder of G Sports from South Africa. G Sports for Girls. From 20 girls, she started, and now she's with 5,000. Very happy to, and welcome. So we will start to have this session. Uh, there is one more. <laughs> My name is Selim Asfar, ah, former sorry, tennis sorry. player from Tunisia. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. And Selim Asfar, Selim Asfar, a tennis player from Tunisia, great tennis player. Thank she you. had a great career. Very sorry. Welcome very to our session. <laughs> so, let us start with this uh, session, which had a half an hour. It's not easy to have, uh, to have or it's not uh, easy to talk in half an hour with women, but we will have an effort, and each one of you will have like five, uh, five minutes. Campbell, you, will, you had a great career with the uh, in Olympic 18 uh, Olympic champion. You had also a career, you are involved in women in sports. You are ambassador of UNESCO 
and especially in gender equality. Can you tell us more? Uh, first of all, your career, how was it easy, difficult since you started? I started track and field when I was um, very young, like 11 years old. And um, there are days when it's difficult, there are days when it's easy. But I, I like that because I like challenges. Um, many of you may know me for my um, track and field accomplishments, but um, I'm as passionate about elevating and uplifting women as I am about um, doing well in athletics. Based on my um, passion to close the gap between um, men and women in terms of gender equality, I was um, designated UNESCO, UNESCO ambassador, champion for sport in terms of gender equality. And um, it is my hope that women will start to get the same level of respect like men do. Because as an athlete um, that participated in track and field for many years, and um, based on my experience, we as female athletes do not get the same pay, although we run the same distances. We are not as promoted as our male counterparts. We are not as presented. We are not as respected. And I know that um, from ancient um, Greece, women has been bombarded from sport, but we have come a long way and there are a lot of sports, um, or a lot of countries that include women in sport, but I still believe that there is still a lot more that can be done to help, um, to help women to know that they're valuable in sport, to know that they can, be, um, they can be good athletes, they can be as promoted or as respected as our male counterpart. And um, we just have to continue to keep doing our best to just keep working hard and to keep speaking out about these things that, that we're not comfortable, comfortable with. And um, I hope that one day women across the world, every single girl and woman who are interested in playing sport will get the support and the financial resources that they need to participate in sport because there are a lot of benefits in, in playing sport, it's their health benefit. Sport is so um, great, it's so powerful. Sport can make a lot of changes, social, economic changes. And so it is important that women, all women, all girls who want to do sport should be able to get the platform to, to participate and to make their country proud, make their family proud, and um, just to enjoy the fruit of being an athlete. So I believe that um, no young girl or woman should be bombarded from participating in sport. Let us go to Salimas for the Tunisian Arab tennis player. As a great career, it was not easy for you also. Uh, your career and also uh, during all this career, you had a lot of experience. Can you tell us more about it? Well, uh, I think today I'd like to, to, to talk more about how to develop the sport in the Arab world for women. Uh, I speak here as an Arab Muslim woman. Um, until now, I think that the culture, the Arab culture and the sports culture have not been able to mix in a strong way together, even though I really believe that they are totally mixable and it's wrong to think that one cannot match with another. But in order to mix them strongly, we need also to develop in a better way, in a stronger way, the culture of sport in general in the Arab world. Well, for that, we need to increase also the, the, the women, the Arab women who do sport. We need to encourage them more because it's a, it takes time, it's generation to generation, it goes through education, the role of the parents, of course, and here we, we are talking about the importance of encouraging women to practice sport in the Arab world. When we say women, we say mother. It goes without saying that a mother has got a very specific and strong influence on the, on, the, on the education of a kid, whether it's a little boy or a little girl. And there is a study, a very good study in Canada, showed that if in a family, if only, only the father is doing sport, in average, 42% of the kids would grow up doing sport. If it's only the mother doing sport, this number goes up to 69. So just a number that shows again uh, the influence of a mother 
on her kid. But in order for this mother to transfer the sports culture to her kid, she needs to have it in herself. And that's why it's very important to encourage more and more women, Arab women, to practice sport. Well, also, a big part of the Arab women have a dress code. For example, they wear the veil. And I, I think it's crucial, it's really important to not only allow these women to practice any sport they want with the veil, but more importantly, we need to actually support them. We need to encourage them. We need to sometimes show them the way and we need to make them feel that if they do that, actually we are proud of them and that we are not going to judge them. Because it's difficult for them. So for some it's new, so it's out of their comfort zone. They can be also scared of the outside look, the outside judgment, whether it is from their community, their friends, their family, or from the Western world. Because for these outside people, it's also new. So for them also sometimes the difference is very difficult to, to accept straight away. So we need this communication, we need this positive and supportive communication through that. And I believe that role models and media have got a very important role in this. We don't have millions of role models, we do have few. I think we should focus more on them, I, should, I think we should highlight them. And the media here has got a very important role, whether it's the Arab media or the Western media, because focusing on these athletes wearing the veil, for example, would, would send this if the media sends this supportive and positive message, all the Arab women will see that and they'll think, wow, actually, they're not judging us. Actually, they are proud of us if we do it. And we need, we really do need this positive and supportive message. And just sorry to finish, there is one message we don't need, we need to avoid, is what happened this year in the Asian game with the Qatari team for basketball that were not able to compete because part of the team was wearing the veil and I can't believe still in 2014, the FIBA don't allow athletes to perform with the veil because what kind of message does that send? Well, first of all, if you wear the veil, you're not allowed to do sport. Or two, if you wear the veil, it's not normal to do sport. And it comes back to the first point I was talking about. That's what creates the gap between the Arab culture and the sports culture. And it's a wrong rule that is sending the wrong message. Actually, uh, I agree totally with what you said, but as I had experience with a couple of documentaries, just to increase women to, pra or to encourage women to practice sports, I have done a lot, and I was awarded by these documentaries. The media is not enough. Media also must be involved in the, uh, with the associations, with the federations, and also we have to believe, because to install the sports culture, with a different society, different tradition, it's not easy. So you have to find the best way to communicate with each society, with each uh, tradition. And this is, as you know, it's not a problem of religion. It's re tradition. Absolutely. And Dira, you had such experience. Can you, um, we can start by when uh, Salima finished. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Peace and blessings on you all. Um, to make a point about the FIBA, Last uh, month, the Qatari national women's basketball team went to represent their country on a national scale, and it was quite beautiful, um, something that every athlete dreams of doing to represent their home country. And unfortunately, they were told that they had to take off their hijab, their veil, or to forfeit. And of course, they decided to forfeit that match, as I think any human being would have done, to represent their faith. And um, I stand in solidarity here, and I also did while I was in New York, uh, with all those women, and not just the Qatari women's basketball team, but all women of different religions, different faiths. I don't think it's just a Muslim issue. I think it's any religion. If you want to stay close to it, and if you want to uh, represent it, and like myself, for me personally, my story is I've played majority of my career without the veil and within the last two years I've become very close to my religion and I went back and forth as I've talked to many Muslim women should I cover what will people think will I lose my job will uh, will I get another job there's so many things that you have to think of and in my opinion that's something that should never ever happen in sport or outside of sport I should never have to choose between my religion and my faith and no athlete no woman or man should have to do that and so when I decided to cover, I decided that from my own personal beliefs, it was something that I needed to do. And um, when FIBA 
has had a current ban uh, against all headgear. So it's not um, just hijab, it's also turban wears. Um, so worldwide, many men and women cannot play. And I just decided to take a stance. I started a campaign on change.org, um, a very famous American um, organization called CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations. They backed us up and said, absolutely, this is not right. It's not fair. Muslim women around the world, boy, girls, boys, should be able to play any sport that they wish. So long story short, working with um, the uh, Sikh coalition in India, we were able to get 70,000 signatures on change.org. The US Olympic Committee backed us up and said, hey, FIBA, maybe it's time to look at this um, rule of yours. It's 2014. Um, and so they did. They allowed a two-year two provisional period, just like FIFA did a few years ago. And uh, in that two-year provisional period, we, um, it's a great first step. And we want to thank FIBA for saying, hey, yes, let's, let's do this. Let's t it's time for change. Try this is time for change. Um, they did it on a national level. They have not allowed it on an international level. And that is why the Qatari women's basketball team was unable to perform and represent their beautiful country. Um, so we're asking FIBA now to go back into their board meeting and kind of look at the rules again and just put it on a international level as well as national level. So as um, Veronica said, I do speak about basketball, but this should be for all sports, for all religions, backgrounds. You should be able to come to one location, showcase your talent. I want somebody to say like yesterday, wow, you're a great shooter, you're a great basketball player. That's what I've done my entire life. I have shot that basketball millions of times. And that's my passion, that's my dream, that's my goal. And I want everybody around the world to be able to experience that. Every little girl, regardless of her religion, regardless of her faith, that she can go out there and do that if she chooses to do so. Yes. We can also uh, continue and say, you know, it's not easy for each one. It's not in only in the Arabic women, Muslim countries. So the fighting or the, uh, the mission is not easy for any woman who wants to improve that herself as a sportswoman or also as a woman in any society. Well, it's quite an interesting uh, topic to have here today because, as you said earlier, we can talk about this for days to come. At the age of 14, I announced to my family that I wanted to become South Africa's first female cricket commentator. And my mother said, it's a ridiculous dream. It's something that you shouldn't even think about. I thought that was great motivation, so I enlisted my brother to become my mentor. And 11 years later, I achieved my dream of becoming South Africa's first female cricket commentator. And uh, it was great to get the support from my family then to then take the dream forward. Um, and in 2006, while I was hosting my radio show, a sports show um, on a South African radio station, I interviewed a sportswoman and every sportswoman I interviewed, um, they always spoke about a lack of support. So I quit my radio show and um, I taught myself how to build a website. I rented a server and I launched an online initiative called G Sport for Girls. The aim of the initiative is to raise the profile of South African women, to encourage corporate sponsorship. And uh, since it was launched back in 2006, we've told over 5,000 stories of hope and positivity to encourage young girls to dream big and realize that their positive stories um, on the court, on the field, uh, is as important as the stories of boys. Um, and shining the spotlight on women is really important because it gives us hope and it gives us energy to move our careers forward. Alongside that, um, I launched the country's only women's sports awards to show young girls that we have icons and role models. I mean, to sit on a panel with, uh, with the likes of Veronica Campbell-Brown, to see Jackie Joyner Kersey here, Ilana Mayer, these are icons of women's sport. And the more we shine the light on them, the better it is for us. So when I leave here um, tomorrow, I head back home um, to encourage women uh, to celebrate themselves. And the G Sport Awards takes place on the 24th of November. And hopefully we can unearth more icons and role models. And um, the more we do, the better we get, and the more we hold hands with each other as women. Um, the challenges don't diminish, but we tend to see the light more than the darkness. Mm -hmm. Marie. Yes. <laughs> and your challenges still continue, I'm sure. It's never finished with you. It's never finished to, to reach the, the highest thing for your aim, I think. It's never finished for any yeah. of us. Um, yeah, I know. 
in 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 America we have a saying that every little girl should be able to say if I can see her I can be her and when I think about the role models on this stage I would want every little girl in the world to see each of you and say, I want to be like you. I want to do what you've done. I think women in sport are the invisible side of sport. And we owe it to humanity to make visible the invisible side, that women who play sport have so much to give to making our world a better place. So when you think about the women up here, the leadership, the qualities, what they have to offer the world are significant. And I think one of the greatest challenges is to move women from the, their world of competition in sport to leadership roles in sport so they have a say in decisions that are made within the Asian Games, within the Women's Tennis Association, within track and field, that women athletes now need to do two things. They need to seek leadership roles so that they can carry influence into their sport. And they always need to be mindful about reaching their hand to the next generation of girls and inviting them to follow. And I think the world will be better, and the world is already better because of these women up here. So, Marianne, through your great experience, what do you think, what is the main thing or the main way to reach this aim, to have, to install the sports culture? Because in Arabic uh, world, it's not easy, you know, because not of the religion, but mainly for traditions. We need more as Salima Asfar uh, said, we need more uh, to be uh, to have the media more involved, but also it's not enough. As I said, everyone must be involved, like association, federations, but with heart. We have, in one word, we have to believe what we are do, doing, or also we have to uh, to go away, even if, even if we see difficulties or anything, but we have to believe first that we can reach this. Yes, and, and women need to be willing to tell their story, yeah. and the media needs to be willing to listen to the story and spread it. Uh, you know, Jackie Joyner Kersey is one of the, the most profoundly successful and good human beings to come out of the United States, and the media has allowed her to tell her story, yeah. but the media around the world needs to be open to hearing the stories of women and telling them broadly. Uh, Veronica, coming from Jamaica, you had this great career, but you, are, you want to be involved more and more in sports and women. But what is the main uh, problem you face in your country, for example? In my country, women are free to play sports. They embrace women's sports. My country loves sports, so both male and female are free to do whatever they want in sport. You may not have the financial support or the resources, but you are able to use what you have and try to do your best. Um, in Jamaica, I have a foundation which I give scholarship to girls in high school, and we also have a mentorship program where we educate and uplift them. And I think uh, along with the media publicizing us, lady and promoting us, we have to play our part by educating the young girls let them not be afraid to dream big, let them not be afraid to keep pushing even when the answer is no. And um, I really believe if we stand together and motivate our girls and continue to work towards um, what we want to achieve as women, we can eventually get there. And if we in this generation do not achieve that, the younger generation may be able to. We have to set the platform and continue to work towards um, gender equality promotion for women and just um, the fact that women are as important as men in the world and in sport. And women have all facilities. It's not a problem of freedom, but facilities to, to make their mission more easy to become champion like you, for example, to encourage them. Yes. I know freedom is not a big deal for in Jamaica. 
and everyone is practicing sport. But what, what about the facilities? What about to make their mission more easy, to be a leadership, to be champion, to, to have their place in society? In Jamaica, the, the, the main sports um, um, that women play are um, track and field and soccer. We have um, the grass fields. A lot of athletes in Jamaica use the grass, not really the track until a certain time in the season. And um, with those sports, you do not need a lot of resources. You may not need a lot of money. But um, for um, Jamaican girls or minority women, or women that live in the third world, to get involved in sports like golf or equestrian, they would need more financial support to be able to do so. Salima, in Arabic countries, as you know, also is not there's uh, a couple of problems. Financial uh, freedom is not really in store, and also the sports culture is not really exactly. in store. I think really, of course, there is always can be some financial financial problems for the athletes, of course. But I think the main the main problem uh, we can say the main issue is again coming back to the to the sports culture, because, f for example, in my experience, when I was 16, 17 in Tunisia, I was starting to play very well, got into the top 100, which is in tennis, quite symbolic and a good, good achievement, and still people were asking me, uh, so what do you want to do for your life? And I used to answer, well, I'm a tennis player. And they used to answer me, okay, well, great, but as a job, what do you want to do? And you know, that's when you realize, actually, that um, we don't, have this, we don't have this culture of sport where to think and to believe that we can make of sport our job. For example, in the States, if you go and you say, I'm a tennis player, they would go, wow, that's amazing. They would respect it more than being a lawyer or a doctor. And I think that is the culture. I think if we improve and if we get to, 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 get to develop this culture of sport in the Arab countries, in general, for the entourage is very important. The team, the people around, this energy around is very important to actually give the belief because without belief, you cannot make it. Sometimes you have the finances, sometimes you have the talents, but we don't have this mentality and this belief around us that we grow with it and make us, and make us champions. And I think that's what we need to develop the most. But as Marilyn said, also we have to, like, we have to see a person, you know, to, to follow a personality. I have to right. be like her, I have to be exactly. to do like her, I have to follow. Uh, Yes. I would like to make a point uh, on Indira. that. Um, I'm uh, currently... Sorry, yes. but you Go know, ahead. as you know also, it's not the religion, but the problem yes. we're always facing with the international federations. Mm -hmm. Before basketball in mm -hmm. Asian Games in ancient 2014, mm -hmm. it was judo in London 2012. Yes. So also there is this problem to fight. So we have to also like make network yes. to find uh, solutions before we face it, we yes. face a problem. I think it's all about opportunity. And uh, it, to make a point, uh, remember that story that our Olympian uh, shared? It takes one soccer ball to get 22 players. One soccer ball. And when you realize that it, they don't have to reach the professional level, the little girls around the world that just want to be healthy. Um, I'm currently working with um, high school girls anywhere from 13 to 16, 17 years old. And for the first time, they said, this is the first time I've ever run a mile. This is the first time I've ever done a, a push-up, a sit-up. And to me, it was just baffling that at that age, that was the first time they've ever done it. And that doesn't cost anything. Sit-ups, push-ups, being healthy, running around. And when you see them smile and when you see them laugh, you realize that it does, they don't have to reach a professional level. They don't have to be superstars. It's just about living a healthy life. And not just for girls, it's all Muslim girls. It's not just for Muslim girls. It's for girls all around the world. Yep. We know obesity is a big issue. We are seeing it all around the world. You walk out and you see it. And it, we just have to change that culture. It doesn't have to be, oh, she's professional. Oh, she's not professional. It's more, are you be living a healthy life? Are you active? Are you running? Are you kicking a soccer ball? Are you hitting a volleyball? Are you playing tennis? Are you running a, a sprints? And so to me, I think we need to bring it back to the basics in some way mm -hmm. and look at it at a bigger spectrum of your health. Mm -hmm. uh, Marilyn, we talk about here in Qatar, for example, we have this experience, uh, uh, sport for life. We have to practice sport for life, to, to be healthy, not first to be healthy, then we think about a sports career. In the United States, what is the main problem our women face? Uh, it's not, I think, about freedom. It's not, what is the main? No, in the United States, it's not about freedom, but um, sadly, it's become about entitlement. And 
sometimes now because freedom has been taken for granted, uh, women athletes forget that with opportunity comes the responsibility to pay it forward and to create a path for others. So that's a problem. The other problem is that women are not going into the coaching profession. And I believe that it's very important for women to be represented as coaches as they then develop young women to follow and uh, really explore their potential as an athlete. Yes, it's also the uh, same situation in South Africa uh, as I have been there. I have seen a, a couple of sports practice be practiced by women there, but also there is a couple of difficulties uh, you face in your experience with the G Sports girls. What is the main problems you are facing uh, in South Africa? You know, Leila, they say perception is reality, and I think it's important for women to change the perception by being ourselves, by being comfortable to be who we are. And the confidence comes by actually being yourself. And when people see those comfort levels, they follow suit. Um, a recent study in 2013, a BMI study, showed just one female athlete, Custa Semenya, in the top 10 of South African sports people in South Africa. That perception needs to change because we do have more icons and more role models. I often say when I'm having a bad day, I tell a good story about a woman in sport to uplift me. And I think it's important that all of us sitting here, if we can change the perception by supporting just one woman, we can change the world. Yeah. You know, you are a commentator. Sadie Mesfer became uh, a consultant of BM Sports in Tennis Tour. And this means that Salim Asfar wants to continue her career as consultant, as a, a presenter also for the tennis uh, program, also a commentator for tennis match. I think this is a way also Salim Asfar is a great image for Arabic sportswoman. Well, thank you. I, I think I, I believe I do have maybe a small role uh, and hopefully uh, I can make it make a little change because, yeah. of course, I. But it's I, important I to continue, Sadima. It's not to stop in your career as an athlete. You continue. Of course, of course. No, I think I think I would like to share my experience first. I would like to share what maybe I've learned, what can make a better, uh, an easier development for the Arab. I'm Arab, so I speak for the Arab Muslim world to make the, the the woman improve more in her conception of the sport and to be more supported and encouraged. And I believe that maybe today I have a job that can allow me to pass more messages, and I would like to take this, this opportunity every day at work to try to, to pass it. And again, that's, that's, the, that's the issue. Communication, the right communication, the positive one, the supportive one is what's going to make a change. Of course, it's a long process, but it goes through communication. Campbell, before, because we have less than uh, uh, 2 30, what you have to say at the end of this session, uh, like a message, but we have to continue, really, to continue work hard to continue our network, women's sports network, through Doha Gors. Absolutely, it, it is our, our responsibility as women to motivate, uplift, communicate, and work towards um, elevating each others, each other um, creating role, role models for young girls, encourage them, let them realize that they can achieve their dreams. So we have to continue working towards closing that gap between um, closing that gap, the gaps women are facing in sport. Marilyn. I would like to suggest that the Goals Forum next year hosts as a subgroup a gathering of all women leaders in sport, um, and that perhaps we carve out a time for every woman who is here this year and every woman who would come again for us to put our minds together and create an action plan that really will change the world for girls and women in sport. And Jira, you, you agree that our mission is not, uh, will not finish today with the end of Doha Goals, as we said before in our meet. We have to continue, we have to create this network, sports uh, women network through Doha Goals, because one of the main problem of women in sports uh, in Arabic countries especially, is to forget whenever a meeting is finished whenever and is we, we close the file and we wait for another session. But I think through the Hagos we continue Absolutely. until the next session. Yes. 
This is a perfect platform for that, and it's a great uh, continuous reminder that it needs to be every single day of the year. And then next year we come back and we say, wow, look at that progress we've made. And I think that's the most important part, that we see progress. And if you see that something is wrong, take a stance, say this is wrong, I'm going to fight for what is right, and then all you can do is pray for the best. And I think that's my message. Yes. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank, uh, thank Richard Atias and the team for giving us this platform to talk about the perceptions of women in sport and how we can change it. And I'd like to agree with Marlene that uh, next year we have an opportunity to grow this platform and encourage more women to believe in themselves and to grow their careers in whatever they do in sport. Selina Sfar, you well, agree that you have to continue to of work course, hard? Of course, we can continue forever. And uh, actually, you know, this is, this is exactly what we need, what we're having here today in Doha Goals. This is a great opportunity, and that's exactly what it needs for things to go forward. And we, exa we should not stop. We should just continue. And it's a battle of every day, and hopefully next year we'll come back here with a lot of improvements. Thank you very much, ladies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank you, you very much uh, to... And, uh, Hope to see you uh, soon next year through the Hagos. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Olympic gold medalist, two-time world champion, and reigning triple.